In this movie, the second one of the rigging section, we start looking at why we've put things into layers and how it becomes even more advantageous as you start rigging your character. I'd mentioned that, well, layers are important because you can go ahead and put some behind others, some in front of others, and you get the dimensionality to your character. That's kind of a no-brainer, and you know that. But you might be thinking, couldn't I actually just put all this on one layer? and then just use move forward, move behind, like we had learned in an earlier lesson? And the answer is yes, but that kind of comes back to best methods. It's not a good idea, and here's why. As we get ready to rig our character, we actually don't want it assembled the way you see right here. We need to go ahead and spread the parts out so we can work on them individually, and the easiest way to do that is simply by doing that in layers. So, that said, let's go ahead and spread this out. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so we can see more around it. And then I'll tell you about how I put these layers together and why, and then we'll get into going ahead and getting the bones on there and starting to get them to work. Now, these lines are very fine right now. I'm going to come back to my display quality settings and turn on aliasing just so I can see it a little bit better. Down here in my Layers tool, keyboard shortcut 1 is the Layer Move tool. This is what I'll be using right now as I start grabbing the entire layers and moving them around the scene before we start putting the bones and finally assembling the rig. We have the left leg selected right now, so I'll go ahead and actually drag that way over here. And I'm going to start back up at the top and we'll do left arm. This is the character's left arm. I'm going to move that over there. Head will move up. Hips I'm going to leave right where they are, but torso I'm going to go ahead and move over here. Right leg I'm going to move down here. And then finally we're going to have right arm. I'll pull that over here. One of the reasons you spread this out, outside of the fact that it makes it very easy to work with your bones, is that when you start adjusting influences, that is, the bone influences and how it grabs all the line drawings around it, it's very nice not to have your line drawings overlapping others and confusing the program a little bit. So I'm going to come back up here now that we've got that spread out in layers. You can see how that works. On the monster bone layer, I'll double click that. Our layer settings dialog box opens up and I'm going to come over here to the bones section. Instead of flexible binding, I'm going to go ahead and turn on region binding. And that's something we learned back in the bone section a little bit earlier. And that for this type of character setup, it's most beneficial to actually work with region binding here a little bit. I'll select OK. And now we're ready to go ahead and begin adding bones into our character. With the bone layer selected, I can come over here to the add bone. And that, of course, is the keyboard shortcut A. Now here's where this is my personal preference, but it's a little bit of an industry standard when you're working with two-dimensional characters like this that have bones or three-dimensional characters in other 3D computer programs. And that is to always put the hip bone right on the hip. I'm going to do that and draw one, click and release. Now for the body itself right here, I like to put more than one, more than two, usually about three, so I can go ahead and get some flexing going on when I want to with the body. So I'll go one, click and release, click and release, and then one last one for click and release. The next one is going to be the head bone. And I'll just come over here to the arm and just like regular joints, I'm only going to put in three here. We aren't going to articulate any fingers. So I'll click once and drag down to the elbow, then click and drag to the wrist, and then finally into the hand. We'll come to the leg and do that, down to the knee, down to the ankle, and then the foot, and then we'll just repeat the process over here on these others. Usually it's best to have the bones right in the center of the, the geometry, if you will, of the actual drawn area, down to the elbow, and to the hand. Now you'll notice over here, let me uh, zoom in just a little bit, this bone right here is not right in the middle of the geometry, and I want to fix that. So I can go ahead and come over here to the Bone Translation tool, and I can go ahead and move that over here a little bit, and you'll notice the one underneath it is acting like a child to the bone. It's connected and moving that way. If I grab this bone up here, it grabs all three. So that's how anime handles the skeletons and makes it a little bit easier to move them around. Let me look at my others here and make sure I am happy. 
with these and how the bones are set up. And here I might grab this hand bone and move it right here a little bit. And it's a process of finessing to make sure everything is exactly the way you want it before you get started. This is the easiest time to fix it, although you can come in later and work on it then. In our next movie, we'll go ahead and start getting ready to rig this together and then work with the bone influences a little bit.